Hello students, welcome to this wonderful session. You all know that we are practicing for the questions. Now it's time to practice your 2020 previous year questions. Are you ready? Are you excited? Practice makes a man perfect. So it is always recommended to practice questions and previous years, previous year questions there are, are our priority questions. So let's start this session. So today I'll be dealing with 2020 questions. Welcome to this session. And today we will be looking at your zoology part that what kind of questions are being asked and how we have to practice because many times, yes, the previous year questions, they are repeated in uh, somewhere or other. Simultaneously, not only these, I will be focusing on some other type of questions also. That means I'll be telling you, yes, this is the question and these are the different type of questions with respect to this topic can be asked in your examination. So everybody get ready from the first minute to the last minute. You have to be with me. You have to watch this video to attain good marks in your examination. So we have started this series that that means we will be looking at all the previous year questions, at least five to six year previous year question we will be looking at. <coughs> what should be your strategies? Always it is like theory paper. Definitely people or the student they get confused that ma'am how much we need to write. So that is the biggest hurdle of the problem that we face. So I'll be discussing all those strategies along with the sol along with solving these questions. So let's start. Let's not waste any time. Let's start the session. So 2020, everybody get ready. So as told you, I'll be discussing various type of questions. La very short answer type, short answer type, the long answer type, all the type of question we'll be looking at. Now the first question is of one mark. That is a very short answer type question. That means this question has four options and you have to select a correct option. Right now, read this question and uh, answer. I want your answers. Come on, come on, everybody. The theory of evolution supported by the experiment conducted by Louis Pasteur. So there was one theory who there was oh, and one experiment was associated with respect to it, and that experiment was done by the Louis Louis Pasteur. You remember the Louis Pasteur experiment, the Swan neck experiment. So that was associated with which theory of evolution? Four options are there. Spontaneous generation theory, lives come from uh, only from pre-existing life, abiogenesis uh, of life or Big Bang Theory. Hope your answer is not Big Bang Theory. Okay, I will tell you the correct answer. The correct answer we have is option number A, that is spontaneous generation theory. So this is quite confusing. Spontaneous generation theory said that the life comes from non-living organisms. Clear? To disprove that theory, one experiment was done by Louis Pasteur. He did the, that swan neck experiment. What was that experiment all about? He took a flask and he curved the neck of that flask. He placed nutritive brew, broth in it and he boiled it. Uh, like simultaneously, he conducted three different type of experiments. Let's have a look in, into that. So, students, he took a flask like this whose neck was bent. Yes, possibly we can do this. It has nutrient growth and a burner was placed like this. Clear? Second. Second, nutritive growth, but no burner. Clear? Third one, neck was broken and nutritive growth, no burner. Clear? Now here, after some time, he saw that this uh, nutritive growth, because it's a food, so it was sterilized, no bacteria, no life was seen. After some time, when he saw this also, no life was seen. Whereas in this case, the life was there. That means somewhere or other, some kind of spores they have entered from this place and some life developed over here. Some life. Right? So that means life doesn't come from non-living organisms. So this is a non-living thing. This is a nutritive growth is a non-living. Definitely it could have given birth to some uh, <coughs> organism as per the spontaneous generation. But yes, this, these things didn't happen. 
when it was present in open air when it was exposed to open air in that time at that time only the life was seen and in both of these condition no life was seen because its neck was uh, like uh, uh, bent so somewhere and initially it was sterile so some kind of spores they were seen here but no life was seen in this brood clear so this completely disproved the theory of the spontaneous generation clear so with this we will go for the option a in this case guys if you have doubt related to any of the topic you can comment we will talk about this topic in detail in subsequent sessions now <clears throat> diagnostic test that confirms a typhoid in human i guess this is very easy and direct from your ncrt four options we have elisa vidal we have mri and amniocentesis what is the right answer yes the correct answer we have is a vidal test vidal test is the correct one now uh, let's talk about other uh, options also first one is elisa full form is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay what is this enzyme linked immunosorbent assay clear buddies yes next we have is a vidal test yes this is for the confirmatory test of typhoid vidal test is being done next we have is a mri magnetic resonance imaging what is this magnetic resonance imaging when we have to look at the detailed structure of any of the body organ we go for mri next we have is the amniocentesis amniocentesis that means amniotic fluid analysis <coughs> amniotic fluid analysis and definitely we have to do this in the pregnant women so around 17 to 18 week when she is pregnant amniotic fluid is being taken out they are analyzed because that has fetal cell and any uh, they are checked for the chromosomal abnormalities if abnormalities are there accordingly uh, precaution accordingly the solution is recommended to the pregnant mother clear so vidal test hope it is uh, clear to you moving on to the next is a bioactive molecule used as an immunosuppressive agent during the organ transplant basically this chap this topic is from microbes in human welfare that comes in botany but because we are talking about the organ tran transplantation so what is the correct answer correct answer we have is option b the cyclosporin a clear cyclosporin a is a correct answer now in organ transplantation basically what happens is chances of graft graft rejection is maximum that means when we are using a part of or part or a whole organ from a donor and we are keeping it into the recipient chances that the recipient body can uh work against that organ that means they can produce antibodies against that organ because definitely that is a foreign to uh, foreign to that or uh, um, human so graft rejection chances they are very high in that case immunosuppressive drugs are being given so that the person will become immunocompromised for some time so in this case the correct answer we have is the cyclosporin a clear remember always remember this now which one of the following is not the product of transgenic experiment not not it is not the product when we have a uh, in questions not always underline that not is there so you have to give answer accordingly clear the product of transgenic experiment so four options are there let's look at the option pest resistant crop variety but before looking at the option let's look at the op question part that we are talking about the transgenic experiments so transgenic experiments what do you mean by transgenic experiment trans genic experiments so what do you mean by transgenic experiments transgenic experiment that means what we are doing is we are taking a gene and we are incorporating into a individual anything or any animal let's say animal one right and this particular gene which you can see is not native to this animal 
they are not native. So that means trans, that's some gene we are inserting from outside. We are not modifying the gene, we are, we are just inserting that gene. Now, transgenic experiments. Why we are doing this transgenic experiment? The pest resistant crop variety, we are making the plant pest resistant. Yes, this is what we have done in Bt cotton. This is what we have done <coughs> in Bt brinjal. Absolutely right, this is right. But we are looking at the not. Next is high nutritional value of grain. Yes, today we are doing that. We are increasing the nutritional value of a grain. That is because of transgenic thing only. This is also right. Next one, production of insulin by RDNA technology. Here we are talking about the uh, not a product of transgenic experiments. In this case, the correct, incorrect basically is this one. Our DNA technology, recombinant DNA, recombinant, new combination we are doing. We are modifying the gene. This is what we are doing with the help of recombinant. Like insulin, for the insulin production, what we did, we took a A chain, we took a B chain, we both of them, we synthesized and later on we joined together. Somewhere or other we are manipulating it. So this is not the case. Now next one is drought resistant crop. Yes, we are making drought resistant crop also. So this is also right, but this is incorrect. So we will go for the option C in this case, the production of insulin by RDNA technique. Will you remember this? Yes. Just imagine yourself in this position that you are attempting this paper. Think about yourself that you are attempting this paper. How many marks can you expect from this paper? I guess because question is easy. Sometimes it is, uh, it is a bit difficult uh, to know about the correct approach to understand what actually the question is all about. So that is a problem. But I guess with practice, with such practices, when where we are doing the previous year questions, where we are have, where we have lots of courses like this, where we are uh, discussing many questions. So definitely that is going to help you a lot. Now next is a short answer type questions. Now these questions you have to elaborate. It's not the case that you're just writing a one word for a particular uh, answers. No, you have to elaborate things. Now, next one. Identify two marsupials from the list given below. Lemur, flying uh, spotted uh, cuscus, we have flying phalanger, bobcat, Tasmanian wolf and mole. So this is directly from your NCRT itself. If you look at the NCRT chapter evolution, here they are talking about the marsupials, two marsupials. So for this, the correct answer we have is flying phalanger and Tasmanian wolf. These are marsupials. You can go and you can... Uh, have a look at the list. So correct answer we have is this. Australian marsupial exhibit adaptive radiation justify the statement. Because when we look at the marsupials, they arise from a common ancestor and they are radiating in various directions. That is the reason we call it adaptive radiation. Depending on the different feeding habitat, depending upon the different kind of um, uh, niche so later on they become adapted to that niche. So they modify themselves with time accordingly and they adapt those change within them. So that is a very good example as far as the adaptive radiations are considered. Clear? So this is just a one mark. So this will be, this part will be of one mark. So this part will be of one mark. One line for both of these that is enough. Do not write so many things. Guys, whenever, as I have discussed about this in many sessions also, whenever you are attempting a paper, always uh, look at this point that either you start from, suppose you are starting from a particular section, section A, <coughs> complete that section, then move on to the next section. Because ultimately what we are doing is, if we are starting with the question number 2 and then we are moving towards the question number 9, we are actually irritating our examiner who is checking our uh, paper. So you should not do that because ultimately she or he is the one who is going to give you the marks. If she or he will be irritated, definitely you will not get marks. So what you have to do is go in a series wise manners. If you're starting, I'm not saying start with the section A only, you can start with the section B also. If you're starting the section B, complete it and then move towards the section C. So follow a particular pattern. Uh, definitely it is good to always attempt section A and likewise proceed towards the last section. It is always recommended to do that but it is always a student's choice. Never ever ever never ever ever use any other color pen. No red pen. Do not use that. Uh, 
<laughs> suppose you have to underline something you can use a uh, you can use a pencil also for that so that you can <coughs> you should definitely do <coughs> now moving on to the next is name the type of immunity the mother provides to the newborn baby and how does it happen now we all know from the mother mother provide antibody to newborn baby how do they provide with the help of the milk yes mother milk it is always recommended it is always recommended to give mother's milk to the, the newborn baby so and this milk has iga immunoglobulin a antibody clear so that in during the initial time when a child who was not susceptible to various infection when child was there in mother's form now he or she is susceptible to various infections so this ig antibody is going to protect the baby against those infections clear the iga now i'll tell you about it many time this was seen that many time most of the students wrote igg also they said igg is that type of immunoglobulin that can cause the placenta but look at the question question is all about the newborn baby that means baby is already born so there is no role of placenta now there is no role of igg now now question is name the type of immunity what type of immunity is it this is from the mother to the newborn baby direct antibodies they are being transferred what is the right answer what is the name of the this immunity that is natural passive immunity natural passive immunity is the right answer will you remember this guys will you remember this natural passive immunity this is the right answer so because this question is of a two marks only writing natural passive immunity will not work over here you have to elaborate this point also that always that when a uh, baby is born it is uh, the baby is always recommend the mother is always recommended to feed baby the mother's milk because that contain ig antibody which is uh, very important for the immune system of the baby more and more a baby will be uh, exposed to various pathogen more will occur more and more the immune system will develop but initially definitely we have to protect the baby so this is the best way name the two primary lymphoid organs state the importance of t lymphocyte now question itself is of two type two parts the first is the two primary lymphoid organ lymphoid organs guys what are lymphoid organs lymphoid organs are those organs where two things happen the first thing is maturation and formation of lymphocyte of lymphocyte second thing is interaction of antigen and anti body interaction of antigen and antibody these are what these are lymphoid organs guys these are what these are lymphoid organs clear so overall there are two types of lymphoid organ first one is primary lymphoid organ primary lymphoid organ and the second one is secondary lymphoid organ secondary lymphoid organs clear now in the primary lymph because question is all about the primary lymphoid organ so primary lymphoid organs they basically include your bone marrow bone marrow it include 
the thymus clear here we have is pears patches <coughs> we have is lymph nodes we have is lymph nodes we have is malt we have is galt clear all these come under the secondary lymphoid organ clear so question is all about the primary lymphoid organ so just explain this primary lymphoid organ this will give you one mark second one is the state the importance of t lymphocyte state the importance of here i am writing for the t lymphocytes t lymphocytes t lymphocytes what is the first function what can i say what is the first function the first function it it helps b cell in the production of antibodies help b cell in antibody production clear buddies is it clear now the second one yes it also helps in the graft rejection graft rejection always remember whenever we do any graft whenever we do any implant in that case the only immune system that works is cell mediated immune response clear so the graft rejection clear is it clear now let's move on to the next question how are malignant tumor differ from the benignant tumor why are some patients treated with alpha interferon now malignant tumor and benignant tumor so guys there are two type of tumors benign you know these days this is a major issue tumors second we have is malignant tumor these day these are the major issues if i say these are not yes like uh, if you look at the total cancer case in ca cases we have today they are massive massive patient massive number of the patients are there we have those hospitals uh, who are working dedicatedly uh, dedic uh, like towards the treatment of the cancer patients so benignant tumors are those tumor which are confined to a place to a place that means they are not going to affect the nearby cell that means more specifically i can say no metastasis that means they will not metastasize into the other uh, places malignant tumor they are cancerous so they metastasize show metastasis clear they are cancerous and they are metastasis that means they spread these cells they spread to the various tissues various organs of the body and it, they can affect that those tissues in the organs clear now benign tumor yes this can be treated because they are confined to a place with the help of a radiation therapy immunotherapy by surgery they can be easily removed but when we have is a malignant tumor that means now the cancerous cells they are uh, they are spreading they are in the blood and they have spread they have uh, they are now present in various uh, tissues in the organ of the body now to remove each and every cell out of the body it becomes very difficult so yes malignant tumor is cancerous and it is so difficult to eradicate but yes today we have radiotherapy we have chemotherapy with us with which initial stages yes this can be treated but it is very difficult to treat it now one method we have is the alpha interferon method yes alpha interferon is that method which is used to treat uh, the cancer in various patients basically students interferons are those chemical which are secreted by virus infected cells and uh, which protect the nearby cells from the further infection of that virus now alpha interferon is that technique which basically do two important things 
what do they do the first one is stop cell division that means they will stop the cancerous cell from dividing further clear the second thing is they reduce the immunity of reduce immunity of cancerous cell cancerous cells that means now they will be uh, uh, you can say they will be susceptible to immune cells clear I'll, let me the stops cell division second one they reduce immunity of cancerous cell these are the two points this is the point number one this is the point number two. clear buddies clear so these are the two works which actually alpha interferon do next one name the hormone which a cow is administered using the moid technology state the function of this hormone now guys here we are talking about the moet technology moet in the strategies of enhancement of food production we talked about the moet what is moet that is multiple ovulation multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology what is this multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology in this case what we do is we inject a cow with one hormone which is fsh which is fsh now what will happen what will happen in cow multiple ovulation that means lots and lots of eggs will be formed in this cow multiple ovulation now what will happen they are allowed to fertilize fertilization that means the sperm will be introduced N numerous eggs are there so there will be formation of large number of embryos what will happen large number of embryo formation now what do we do next at seventh day of fertilization at seventh day of fertilization embryos are recovered that means they are taken out clear so this is a moit technology now also for the production of various <coughs> embryo this is being done the hormone responsible for this is fsh which is what which is your follicular stimulating hormone which is what guys follicular stimulating hormone they are introduced into cow multiple ovulation will occur they are allowed to fertilize large number of the embryo formation at seven days the embryos they are retrieved clear m o e t m o e t clear now let's move on to the next question now let's talk about the short answer type 2 question in the short answer type 2 question guys these questions they will be of three marks Till now we have talked about those questions which are just of two marks. Now we will be dealing with the three marks question. Now, study the given diagram. Now we, this was the question. This was another. See these questions. They are very interesting. Now, study the given diagram. We have some structure like this, which is transforming into the structure like this. A is an embryonic stage that get transformed into B. Which in turn gets implanted into the endometrium in the human female. Identify A, B, their part C and D. State the fate of C and D in the course of embryonic development in humans. 
question seems very interesting yes such type of questions can be asked because important so get ready so this is a diagram this is one diagram this is another diagram can you imagine what is happening over here definitely uh, embryonic development sort of things are happening now here what is the structure the structure is of morula this is a morula structure clear this is a morula now this morula transforms into this particular thing what is this this is a blastocyst see it is written over here a that means morula i'll write it here for your convenience morula is embryonic stage that get transformed into blastocyst b for blastocyst which in turn gets implanted into the endometrium so blastocyst is the one which gets implanted clear till now hope it is clear let's proceed further here they are saying what do you mean by c and what do you mean by d so this is c c is what c is inner cell mass basically guys what are these these are stem cells stem cells clear and what do you mean by d the outermost cover that is termed as the trophoblast trophoblast clear now question is says what is the fate of these two structures see c and d course of embryonic development so c will help in the formation of the fetus what do you mean by trophoblast trophoblast will help in the formation of your placenta fetus inner cell mass is going to arrange in this manner that it will form the ectoderm endoderm and the mesoderm which will form the further structure as far as the differentiation is considered now whereas the trophoblast which is there in the outermost layer that help in the formation of placenta and you know the placenta why it is important clear so this is a very easy question i guess many of my students can easily score 3 out of 3 marks in this question yes yes or not yes definitely <laughs> okay let's move on to the next question when bacillus thuringiensis enters a certain insect body the insect get killed but itself remain unaffected explain how it is possible see this is every time every year this is favorite questions of examiner uh, <coughs> now what they are saying is we have is a bacillus thuringiensis <coughs> bacillus thuringiensis this is what bacteria or virus this is a bacteria they are saying when they enters into the insect body when they are eaten up by the insect <coughs> the insect get killed what will happen to the insect insect will die insect will die they are asking what's the reason behind it the reason behind it is because in bacteria they are produced they produce one chemical which is termed as bt toxin bt toxin so this toxin is actually a protein which is cri protein which is what cri protein this bt toxin is formed from cri gene that is formed from cri gene cri gene is there in bacillus thuringiensis which is a bacteria it forms a toxin which is bt toxin cri protein now here this protein is produced in inactive form which form inactive form inactive that means they are not active they are inactive when we have introduced this cri protein directly into the insect the insect will die because the in this in the insect this inactive toxin inactive toxin 
is converted into the active toxin. Active toxin. Why? Because of because of alkaline pH of gut. Alkaline gut pH. Clear? Clear students? Because of alkaline gut pH, this is converted into active toxin. Now what will happen? The insect will die. Clear guys? Is this clear till now? So that is the reason the insect die but Bacillus thuringiensis which is a bacteria will not die. Okay, okie dokie, okie dokie. Chal, let's proceed further. Again, this question is over 3 marks. So, answer it wisely. Identify the step A and B in the cycle. These are the two steps, this one and the, this one. Now, on the polymerase chain reaction, state the specific characteristic feature of the enzyme in the carrying step B. Now, look at the step. The step is all about the reaction which is polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction. That is a PCR. What is this? That is a PCR. Now here, what we have is, we have is this DNA. In the step 1, we have some primers attached to it. What are these guys? These are the primers. Primers are what? Some oligonucleotide chain. Some oligo, small, small nucleotide chain. They are being attached. And if we look at the whole process of polymerase chain reaction, three step is there. The first step is denaturation, second step is annealing and third step is the extension. Here the primers, they are annealed. So this step is annealing step. Which step is this, Bachu? This is annealing. So, A step over here is annealing. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to add DNA polymerase and some other deoxynucleotides we are going to add. What will happen? There will be continuous formation of these strands. This is termed as a B step, which is your extension. Clear? In the first step, we normally separate it. Separation is termed as a denaturation. Here they are already separated, but in the first step, they are saying the primer are being attached. So, just for the confusion, normally what we do is, whenever we learn the, these things, uh, the sub polymerase chain reaction, the first step is, whenever the teacher teaches, the first step teacher teaches is, A step, that is a denaturation. B step is an annealing. C step is an extension. And over here, A and B again are given. So, definitely it is going to, uh, is going to confuse many of the students that A, that means denaturation. Nahin. Look at the question. In the questions, uh, in the diagram itself, some primers are there. So, they are talking about the annealing of primers. So, this is annealing and B1 is the extension. Now, look at the second part. Identify the specific characteristic features of the enzyme in the st step B. Now, here this enzyme. Whenever this enzyme is added, that means extension will occur. Extension normally occurs at high temperature. Clear? Around 70 to 75 degrees uh, temperature, the annealing happens. But the whole process of PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, occur in a closed vessel kind of, closed machine kind of things, where the first step is denaturation, where the temperature goes up to 90 degrees Celsius. And you know these enzymes, they are, uh, these are proteins only and they can denature. So, for the PCR procedure, some thermostable enzymes, they are being used. Which enzyme? Thermostable. We should not denature at high temperature because in first step, temperature goes up to 90 degrees Celsius. It, it can go beyond also depending on the CG content. If CG content is more, we have to give more energy, more power for the denaturation. <coughs> so, we always use a thermostable enzyme. So, thermostable enzyme we have is the TARC polymerase. TARC polymerase. TARC polymerase is the TNA polymerase which is extracted from a thermus aquaticus which lives in a hot springs. 
This is an organism which live in a hot spring. They are thermostable. So this enzyme was taken. If that is uh, active in those organisms who live in hot springs, definitely we can use them in PCR machines. So that is how they are being taken out. And these are the some features as far as the talc polymerase are considered. Yes, buddy, is clear? Clear? Hope till now the things are clear. Now, this is again of a three marks. Do not go into depth. But yes, look at the question properly and read all the answers. Like, read all the questions, A part and a P part. Take your time and answer them. Now, another very important, beautiful questions from your notes. Now, study the diagrammatic representation of S.L. Miller experiment. Yes, with this experiment, this should strike directly on your mind that this is a Miller experiment. Clear? S.L. Miller experiment. Miller and the Urey experiment also we call it. <coughs> Clear? Okay, got scared. Now, how did S.L. Miller create the condition which existed before the origin of any life in earth? They actually created the whole environment which exists in the previous environment. Now, if you look at this vessel, the two different vessel, a big vessel and the small vessel was taken. This was around, this was having a capacity of around uh, 5 liter. And another vessel, another closed vessel was taken, which was ha having a capacity of around 500 ml. So they created those conditions which were prevailing at previous times. So how did they did that? The first thing is they used electrodes. So I am going to write each one of these one by one. So the first thing is they use electrodes. Electrodes for what? For creating a spark because at that time the sparkling activities they were very high. Second thing is they raised the temperature. Second thing is they kept the temperature around 900 degrees Celsius which is high, high degree temperature. <coughs> Third important thing is they took some precursor molecules. These precursor molecules which they took was methane, was ammonia, was water and was H2. So all these they took over here. Clear? First thing is, first thing, electrodes that provide a spark because at that time thundering activities were happening. Temperature they kept it high around 900 degrees Celsius because the water was boiling over here. Third one, they use some precursor over here, so that is ammonia, that is methane, that is hydrogen and the water. Water keeps on boiling over here and after 8 to 9 days, some sample were collected. After how many days? 7 to 8 days, some samples they were collected. Majorly, that sample was rich in alpha alanine and beta alanine. So they were rich in alpha alanine and the beta alanine. Basically, this was, they were rich in this. Clear? Some traces of amino butyric acid, majorly then. Major. Amino butyric acid. Acid. And aspartic acid was also collected. So they were in traces. Clear? Clear? So these are the molecules which they collected. Name the organic compound formed and collected at the end. These are the molecules. You can give answers. Mention the kind of evolution his experiments support. His experiments support organic evolution. Organic evolution. What do they support? The organic evolution. Clear buddies? Hope this is also clear to you. So each and every step. The first thing is guys I am again vouching in this video. This question can be asked in your examination, the Miller and the Ure experiment. So, Miller and the Ure experiment, write it down or draw this diagram many times in your notebook because 
the revision is important so try to make them the pcr is also important the pcr steps what does it happen what do you mean by 5 prime 3 prime all those you should not be confused with that because many time it is like whenever we are uh, writing this pcr they uh, opposite the direction of pcr like uh, the primers like so that you have to also see it should be proper it should not be opposite like means it should be opposite to that of the parent strand but sometime it is we do not go in that direction clear so look at those things also if you are uh, <coughs> sure for that thing then only write otherwise do not let's move on to the long answer type questions draw the sectional view of the seminiferous vestibule of human and label its six part six part we have to label name the pituitary hormone involved in the process of spermatogenesis and their functions okay let's talk about it the first one is a section section guys you can directly take from the ncert but it's okay we will be talking about that. let's talk about that thing also the first thing we have is a guys basement membrane then we have some cells associated with it which is termed as spermatogonium <coughs> the sperm mother cell some cells from these they form the primary spermatocytes then they form the secondary spermatocytes and then they form spermatids and some mature sperms they will be present like this clear in between we will be having some cells which are sertoli cell let's label them one by one let's so write down this is the basement membrane then we have these sertoli cell then we have is spermatogonium then we have is the primary spermatocyte then it forms the secondary spermatocyte and then it forms the spermatids and in the lumen we have is spermatozoa clear clear guys clear so this is a diagram easy diagram directly given in your ncert that also you can try spermatids they are joined to each other with the help of cytoplasmic bridges so they are in continuous with each other okay now name the pituitary hormones involved in the process of spermatogenesis okay the pituitary hormone so <clears throat> the first thing is remember we have is the master of master gland the hypothalamus hypothalamus secrete hormone which is gonadotrophin releasing hormone this acts on anterior pituitary anterior pituitary and anterior pituitary releases two hormones the first one is the fsh follicular stimulating hormone and the second one we have is lh clear fsh is follicular stimulating 
hormone. And the second one is luteinizing hormone. Clear? Now, the follicular stimulating hormone, the FSH, they help in. What do they do? Or the LH, they act on the Leydig cells. Leydig cells, you know, they are present in uh, around the uh, in the testes. So these Leydig cells, they produce hormone which is androgen, and this androgen helps in the process of spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis. Clear? Yeah. Now, follicular stimulating hormone, on the contrary, they act on Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells. And these Sertoli cells, what do they do? They help in providing nourishment. Other than the nourishment, this follicular stimulating hormone, they help in the spermiogenesis. <coughs> so, they also provide nutrition. Right? So, this is a fate of the anterior pituitary hormone because the question is related to anterior pituitary only. It secretes two hormone, FSH and LH. Clear? Follicular stimulating hormone act on Sertoli cells, helps in the process of spermiogenesis. So, what is spermiogenesis? That is formation of sperms from spermatids. And it provides nourishment also. Leydig cells, they Produce one androgen, which is testosterone, we all know, and help in the process of spermatogenesis. So, this is a fate of pituitary, uh, anterior pituitary. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. IUDs are said to be effective contraceptive. What do you mean by IUDs, guys? What do you mean by IUDs? IUD is your intrauterine devices. Intrauterine devices. Like we have copper tea, we have uh, multi-load, etc. Effective contraceptive, name any two commonly used IUDs and write the mode of their action. Two IUDs we have to mention. Now, as far as your IUDs are considered, two are very, very, very prevalent. The first thing is progester cert. Progester cert. Progester cert is what? They are hormone releasing IUD. Hormonal releasing IUD. So they keep on releasing this hormone. And what do they do? They prevent implantation. They prevent implantation. That means they will not allow implantation to happen. Second one that is a copper 7 or multi-load 375 copper 7 is being used. So copper 7 they are copper releasing. These are the two very famous uh, IUDs they are copper releasing and what do they do? They suppress sperm motility. So, they affect the sperm motility, copper 7 and the progester third. Always remember, guys, they are hormone releasing IUD and they are the copper releasing IUDs. Clear? Mode of action also we have discussed, like they prevent imp uh, implantation, they prevent the sperm motility. Ne right, next one is when in uh, sterilization is advised to mar a married couple, how it is carried out in human males and the females respectively. Now, <clears throat> guys, sterilization. Sterilization methods. Basically, guys, these are permanent method of contraception. Now, in case of female, the tubectomy is being done. 
and in case of uh, uh, you can say male vasectomy is being done here i'll talk about both of this in case of tubectomy a small incision is being done from that incision a camera is inserted and that camera reaches up to the fallopian tube over there with the help of a catheter they the tubal that means the fallopian tubes they are ligated or that is called as a tuber ligation and sometimes they are cut also so that there will not be a proper flow of the egg egg will not the secondary oocyte will not be able to flow that is done in case of female that is tubectomy and the second one is a vasectomy vasectomy same method is being done both the vas deferens they are cut and they are tied clear this you know about this is we have studied in the ncert also in this case because it is a five mark question so you have to draw the diagram fallopian tube where the fallopian tube is cut and the ligated and the second one is the vasectomy where the vas deferens is cut and the ligate, uh, uh, ligated now <coughs> this diagram is there in ncert i'm not drawing it right now you can refer to your ncert for that diagram when is sterilization advised to a married couple when when they are, they are not family planning when they have enough of kids i can say when they are saying that they don't want to produce more kids so in that case it is always recommended to go for the sterilization method because this is permanent one cannot reverse it clear now oh yes so with this we have completed all your questions all the questions from 2020 we have completed from the first to the last topic and uh, considering everything is clear to you if you still have any doubt related to any topic if it is menstrual cycle or any oogenesis any topic you have in your mind that you are doubtful about it you can come in the comment section and definitely your chavi ma'am is going to help you in that so let's wind up the session over here we are going to meet next where i'll bring another paper and we'll be discussing that till then keep uh, take care keep studying keep yourself safe in this time thank you so much students for watching this